Okay. This meeting is being recorded. No, but the credit goes to people who are on the phone from the other side, who's a fine yes. team. So I yes. really need to definitely. give credit to them. Yes, definitely. Given the magnitude of change, some teething trouble was always anticipated. Yeah. But by and large, everything has been fine. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for the support as well, I think. The trend is slowly becoming, becoming smooth for now. <laughs> Sorry? So slowly it is becoming smooth now. Uh, sir, you'll see a different Monday altogether. Oh, uh, yeah. We are quite confident about it. So. Yeah. Thank good. you. Thank you. Very good. Sandeep ji, I think we should start. It is 5 or 6. And yeah, yeah. I think we should we start. start. So, uh, we can keep it in Hindi and English both. I think there are so many participants also wherein, you know, a bigger and a better participation and a more efficient participation can happen when we can do it in, I think, English. Virendra ji, if you allow and if you, Vikram ji, if you allow so. No, Sandeep ji, not a problem at all. Yeah. Uh, it is just that the comfort of the speakers uh, yeah. uh, uh, wherever they can, they will certainly. Uh, I am totally okay, fine, sir. Okay, elevate fine. the team as well. So, I think uh, thank you so much, Vikramji, first of all. And I think it's the third meeting. Uh, continuously, we have been doing on two last two Mondays, and now it's today. And certainly, it's a very big change which uh, the exchange and the clearing corporation and the members have been, you know, going through. And I think this is a gigantic uh, basically migration. And this allocation model has not been, you know, so easy as expected. But somehow, I think with the help of the exchange and the clearing corporation, I think things are getting smooth. And I think it was not expected also by the members that, you know, it will get smooth so fast. But still, I think uh, uh, there are some teething problems which you are always ready to resolve. And I think in today's webinar, we can, you know, discuss the issues which are being faced by the members. It's very uh, natural also that you know there are so many problems the members have been facing and time to time you have been resolving also and many of the issues are maybe because of the incomplete understanding also of the members and how to operationalize all the elements and I think uh, from here onwards we can uh, uh, request all the participants if they have their queries they please write it on the chat box and you know uh, Virendra ji can and Ajay ji will handle the Q&A session after that. And first of all, let's welcome Vikram ji, Renu Bhandari ji, and Huzifa ji, Ms. Sijo ji, and Aniket ji. And agar mein kisi ka naam bhul gaya hon, to please uh, forgive me for that. And welcome all the uh, participants. And that's a very big number. I think more than 350 participants in the third uh, series. So I think the problem somehow uh, will be resolved. And I think as uh, Mr. Vikram Kothari has already said, you know, uh, that we will have a different Monday altogether. And I'm very sure, and I can see that on the face of Mr. Vikram Kothari also, uh, that uh, he must be having lots of sleepless nights also. And they have been dissolving. And uh, I can see that kind of dynamism also that, you know, uh, they are all geared up and all ready to solve all the issues which the members have been facing. So, over to uh, Mr. Vikram Kothari and the NCL team for the presentation. Thank you, Sandeep. Thank you. We'll keep, I'll keep it very brief. Thank you very much for all the support. And I think we all agree that it's a major change. And uh, 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 while we are working uh, uh, to make sure that it stays as smooth as possible in the entire transition phase, uh, we will request the members also to pay attention to the presentation that has been put across by the team and they because the intent is to take them through and navigate them through the entire process of how to actually use the mechanism on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, uh, let me assure you that let's not keep this as one of the last presentations we'll have subsequent we should plan these sessions maybe i would suggest we can if we can do it on the weekly basis for a couple of weeks because a lot of participants who may not be able to join today or may have further queries can actually come back during the next session while we are always available and uh, our teams are always available. And uh, in case there are queries that have to come to us in written, we'll try and address them as far as possible and as soon as possible. But um, during this entire transition phase, please, it may take some time for us to respond back on things, uh, but just bear with us on that. I will not take much time, uh, 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 members of CPI, but I would request uh, Josefa and uh, uh, and the team 
to take it from here josefa you would like to share your so sir we will start we will confirm next friday same time we'll have a second session whatever is left right now and whatever are the issues on this or next week we can take that up next friday thank you so much yeah. uh, vikram ji uh, it's a great uh, gesture and an initiative also and really hats off to your readiness you know to no no in fact there yeah. all the time yeah thank you no, so sandeep much. it is not about that sandeep in this we are all together yeah. and in fact it's our job to make it work together that's very important we working in isolation is not going to help at all because the problems will not go away So, thank you sir thank you thank you so this is very important so please i'll hand it over to huzefa without wasting any time huzefa you want to share your screen hmm? is the uh, screen visible yeah yes it is yeah okay uh, so good evening everyone uh, so what we basically we will do is that uh, i'll try and cover both in english and hindi wherever possible so we will uh, basically run through the simple steps of allocation how do you give collateral how do you release collateral how do you transfer collateral collateral maturity if it happens how to handle it so these are the basic things and as of now we are not going into very detail of you know um, and the uh, of you know end client level how upward downward will work and how the deemed allocations and things like will work because that we have time so we'll keep, we can keep it for the subsequent slides but today we will do it on the basic stuff as to how whenever you want to give any new collateral how to give it how to take back collateral how to transfer collateral and how to move collateral from one segment to another so that's the the basic stuff which each member needs to do to ensure their day to day trading so we'll start with uh, the addition first so uh, they basically they, uh, this uh, change is applicable only for uh, additions for cash fd bank guarantees for your security addition there is no change it is continues to be happening as it is happening in the depository system you will continue to pledge repledge and even for release and transfer of security there is no change it continues to putting a request on ci and then you getting the uh, release so for securities basically there is a zero change the basic change comes only for cash fd and bg so for cash addition uh, what is there is that uh, earlier also the first step remains is that you have to put a request on cim so that was also earlier also there it remains the same process you go to cim you go to cash deposit there you can see which banks all are connected to you so from whichever segments bank you want to place the request you place the request and the amount you place and then it goes to bank for confirmation earlier what used to happen is the moment the bank used to confirm it used to get added to your collateral now what will happen is uh, once the bank confirms it will not get added to the collateral but it will go and sit in a pool so <clears throat> that facility since uh, uh, is not on cim so you will have to then switch over to nmas your nmas login in nmas login what we have done is that we have given collateral management as a new functionality so i think uh, from our experience over last one week most of the members have got the access to collateral management but in case you don't have access to this collateral management screen uh, the super admin of the member or the admin of the member who manages the nmas has to go and give rights to the users who want to use this collateral management screen so there is a single collateral management functionality in which various functionality of collateral management is given so people can uh, uh, go to uh, the super admin and super admin can give the access of collateral management to the users which want it so once uh, the access is given uh, the uh, various uh, screens are available or various menu options are available in the collateral management screen uh, one of them is this collateral inquiry screen so the collateral inquiry screen basically gives you what is your free collateral available for allocation now uh, uh, the question arises why we have this segment wise also and why we have this fungible collateral also so some of the type of collateral like if you give a bank guarantee which is non fungible that can be used only in that specific segment so in that case you can allocate that bank guarantee only in that specific segment and not in other segments so if you say let's assume you give a bank guarantee which is which is non fungible and you have given bank guarantee which is only for cash on market so that amount will show only in your cash market pool but if you add any cash or you add any fdr which are fungible 
the moment you add them it will show in your fungible collateral available for pool so any collateral get added any any new fdrs any uh, fdrs which are renewed after maturity any bank guarantees any cash which you add the moment they are approved they will come and the amount will be available in this module so once you see that amount is available in this module you can use for collateral so i'll just maybe you know uh, repeat this the same thing in hindi that uh, जब भी कोलेटरल ऐड होता है तो पहले जैसे कोलेटरल कैश का ऐड होता था वैसे ही सिम पे जाके ऐड करना होता है वो ऐड होने के बाद पहले डायरेक्टली डिपॉजिट में ऐड हो जाता था अभी वो डिपॉजिट में ऐड नहीं होगा आपको एलोकेट करना पड़ेगा टू एंटिटी टू होम द कोलेटरल देना है सिमिलरली अगर बैंक गारंटी देते हैं या फिक्स डिपोजिट देते हैं तो फिक्स डिपोजिट अगर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक है तो बैंक जब भी मैसेज भेजेगी तो ऑटोमेटिकली इधर पूल में आ जाएगा फिजिकल एफ डी आर बीजी अपने ऑफिस में दी है कोई भी ऑफिस में ब्रांच ऑफिस में जब भी वो लोग चेक करके ऐड कर लेंगे तो वो यहाँ पे पूल में दिखेगा तो जब भी वो पूल में दिखता है तो आपको ये अमाउंट दिखेगा कि कितना अमाउंट अपना फ्री अवेलेबल है पूल में और फिर वहां से आप एलोकेट कर सकते हैं टू रिस्पेक्टिव से तो नाउ कमिंग टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज एलोकेशन तो वी हैव गिवन थ्री मेथडोलॉजी ऑफ एलोकेशन वन इज अ स्क्रीन बेस्ड one is a file based and third is an api based so screen based is basically if you want to do allocation for one record then you can do a screen based if you want to do allocation for say 1000 records you have to use or anything more than one record up to 1000 records you have to do a file based if you want to do more than 1000 records also we will suggest that you do an api based where you can in a single api message you can send 1000 but you can send multiple api messages together and you can keep on sending those api messages so basically these are the three ways in which you can allocate the collateral so how do you so let us assume uh, we will keep the file based and the api based so subsequently for because uh, to start with uh, most of the collateral may be allocated to a single entity or uh, you know uh, to the proprietary if you want to allocate you can use the screen based because in proprietary it is only a single allocation which works so there uh, there are two things let's assume you want to allocate for an entity which was not in the system or a new client comes in and for a new client you want to allocate so there we have a facility of a new request where you can basically go to a new request and input the details so let's assume there is one client for which you want to do an allocation you can go to new request you can uh, part and select the segment you can select the tm code in case it is a cp client the cp code otherwise uh, client code and then um, allocate the amount and then there again there are two options the immediate or end of day so the options we will uh, discuss subsequently but uh, these are the screens which is there assuming you want to allocate to an existing client or maybe say you want to allocate to clients for whom already some allocation is lying or to a proprietary whom the allocation is already lying then in that case you should use the modify or inquiry screen so again in the menu options of collateral management one of the screen is modify inquiry there uh, whichever segment you want to uh, modify or do allocation you have to select the segment if you want to do an allocation at a proprietary level so if you are uh, clearing so this uh, maybe i will uh, to just uh, reiterate that this allocation and this facility of nmas allocation is available only to people who are clearing member for trading member they will have to approach their clearing member and then the clearing member will have to do the allocation on their behalf So, if you want to do, do allocation at a proprietary level for yourself as a clearing member, then you need not put any of the fields. You can simply select the segment and do a search button, and it will show you what is the existing amount which is allocated to your proprietary. So, this screen basically is useful for inquiring also. So, if you want to inquire what is the existing allocation to any of the entity, you can use this screen. And once uh, you can use this to modify both upside or downward. So, upside basically you can allocate. only to the extent of amount which is available in the pool which we saw earlier so if if let us assume there is 1 lakh rupees which you added and is available in the pool the maximum amount which you can increase the allocation is only by 1 lakh so uh, here let us assume in your proprietary if you said that there was already 2 lakh rupees which is showing as inquiry if you want to add that 1 lakh rupees you have to change that number to 3 lakh rupees you cannot if you make it 1 lakh rupees it, it will assume that you are reducing from 2 lakh to 1 lakh and it will uh, you know consider it is a downward so it has to be basically uh, and uh, you have to increase or put the final amount which you want so if you want to do an increase from 2 lakh to by 1 lakh you have to put 3 lakhs there if you want to reduce you have to put 
from say two lakh to by fifty thousand, you have to put one and a half lakh rupees. Uh, again, um, so this um, screen basically uh, is uh, for um, modifying the collateral. जिन जिन लोगों ने ऑलरेडी एलोकेशन करके रखा है और कोई क्लाइंट पे या तो प्रोपराइटी पे उसको अगर मॉडिफाई करना है तो ये स्क्रीन यूज कर सकते हैं बेसिकली जब ये स्क्रीन हम लोग इन्वोक करेंगे तो और उसमें सर्च करने का ऑप्शन है अगर प्रोपराइटी का सर्च करना है तो खाली सेगमेंट सिलेक्ट करके सर्च दबाएंगे तो प्रोपराइटी पे क्या अमाउंट एलोकेटेड है वो दिखेगा अगर क्लाइंट पे सर्च करना है देन आपको सेगमेंट डालना पड़ेगा आपका टीएम कोड डालना पड़ेगा और क्लाइंट कोड डालना पड़ेगा और फिर सर्च करना पड़ेगा देन यू देन आपको वो क्लाइंट का डिटेल्स दिखेगा आप ये स्क्रीन से दोनों अपवर्ड और डाउनवर्ड एलोकेशन कर सकते हैं मतलब कम या ज्यादा कर सकते हैं किसी क्लाइंट का अगर कम करना है या ज्यादा करना है तो वो क्लाइंट का इधर से कर सकते हैं इसमें अगर आपको बढ़ाना है तो द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट या जो बढ़ा सकते हैं वो जो आपका पूल में अवेलेबल है उसी अमाउंट से आप बढ़ा सकते हैं उससे ज्यादा आप अगर बढ़ाने का ट्राई करेंगे तो बोलेंगे सफिशियंट कोलेट्रल इज नॉट अवेलेबल तो वो ध्यान रखना पड़ेगा कि जब भी हमको बढ़ाना है तो जितना पूल में अवेलेबल फ्री है उतने से ही हम बढ़ा सकते हैं डाउनवर्ड करना है कम करना है तो उसमें सिस्टम में चेक रहेगा कि अगर वो जो अमाउंट आप डाउनवर्ड करेंगे तभी जो बैलेंस अमाउंट बचेगा उतना मार्जिन फ्री होना चाहिए अगर आपने सपोज दो लाख रुपया है और आपने उसको डेढ़ लाख रुपया किया लेकिन अगर ऑलरेडी मार्जिन एक लाख अस्सी हजार रुपया है तो वो डाउनलोड एलोकेशन फेल हो जाएगा तो जितना अगर मार्जिन से ब्लॉक है उतना आप डाउनलोड एलोकेशन नहीं कर सकते हैं Uh, we'll move forward. Uh, so these are the various combination on which you can use the screen. So if you are a clearing member and if you want to do a prop allocation, the only thing which you have to select is only the segment. Everything else you have to keep blank. If you are if you are a TM CM and you are doing allocation for other TM, so not for yourself. So people who are self clearing members, for them the point line number two does not make applicable. Only line number one is there. If you are doing for an entity who is an other TM and you want to do then you have to select the segment and then you have to select the tm code agar if you are doing for a cp code then you have to select the segment keep the tm code and client code blank and only keep the cp code if you want to do and for an end client who is a retail client of your tm or your yourself then you have to select your segment if it is your direct client then you have to select your own tm code and your client code if it is a client of other tms then you have to select that tms code so this is the grid which you have to keep in mind whenever you are using the screen based inquiry and similar grid you have to uh, keep in mind when you are doing your file based allocation also so when you are you are doing file based allocation also this is the file this is the columns which have to be kept and these are the columns which have to be kept blank depending on where you want to do inquiry the allocation coming to file based allocation we uh, we have given the file formats and uh, you have to make those file formats either you can make using uh, your own software or using notepad is for the formats and the file naming and all those uh, checks are built in already we have issued uh, various circulars with the formats of the file and um, there is an allocation for uh, by default whenever you go to collateral management this is the first screen you will be able to see the file allocation uh, screen there you have to browse and select the file and uh, upload it as per the file format in case there there is any problem with the name of the file it itself will reject it and not allow to upload the file itself if the file name is correct but uh, you know there is some problem in the data the file will be selected as upload but um, the normal rejections or any uh, succession will come in the download file so you have two tabs in the same screen for an upload and download once you upload the file you um, you can select so there also whenever you upload there are two options so either it's an immediate or an end of day request so i'll just uh, stress upon this request so immediate or intraday request will be processed immediately the moment you give the file we will process the request eod upload is for request which you want to process at end of day that means at end of day when we are doing our end of day processing and end of day release all those records will uh, be uh, processed only at that end of day time intraday what will happen is in case you upload any eod file or you do an eod request from the screen that request will show as under processing because it would have not got processed it will get processed only at end of day 
So yeah. until the end of day, you will see all those requests as under processing. So in case you want to do, if you are planning to do any immediate allocation, please be careful that this is there. So what we have done is uh, on day one, we realized that a lot of people were making mistakes in this immediate and EOD. For time being to start with, what we have done is that EOD option has been enabled only post 4 p.m. So because anybody want to do any immediate allocations, if they try to do any EOD allocation, they will see as window is closed uh, during market hours. And you can upload EOD uploads post 4 p.m. and then that will be processed. So um, to avoid people to wrongly select on EOD and then keep on waiting for, you know, my allocation is not happening. We have put that checks in place that uh, the EOD window will open only after 4 p.m. Uh, maybe those times are anyway, uh, since it's very new, uh, under, we can uh, relook it at subsequent days also. But to for time being, the timings are that you can do immediate allocation from morning 8 till evening 6. And EOD upload you can do from evening 4 till evening 6. The moment you upload the file, uh, you will get a, a file in download. Till the time the file is not processed, it will show as I and uh, the batch indicator. So let's assume you uploaded a batch one. The, immediately you will get a return file which will show as dot I001. So I001 does not mean your file has been fully processed and you will get a return file. It is under processing. So whenever you get an I001, that means at least your file has been accepted and it is sent for processing. So it does not give you the final status. It does under processing status. The moment the file has been processed, you will get an S001. So the same file will, the name will change from I to S. If you do a refresh, there is a refresh uh, option available. The moment you do a refresh, that I001 will convert to S001. And that will give you the final picture of what is the status of your file. Once you download the file, in the last column, we give the various error codes. So if you get a 0105100, that means it's successful. Anything else other than that, that means there are some rejections and we have given detail uh, uh, circular on uh, how to interpret those rejection codes. So, you know, over a period of time, people will get used to it. So 0105100 is a success record. Anything else other than that is a reject and uh, the reason for rejection, you can then uh, look it up in the error reports. So coming to uh, the file upload uh, errors, which we have seen over the period, um, members generally, uh, like I said, they have options for both intraday and EOD, but uh, even uh, they were making mistakes that when they wanted to do immediate also, they were putting on EOD and when they wanted to do in EOD, they were putting in immediate. To currently to avoid that problem, we have changed the window timing. So at least during market hours, people cannot upload EOD and then you know wait for things to happen, we uh, uh, allow people to do it only after four o'clock. Second is that uh, mistake which we observe is that whenever, if like we said that in the earlier uh, part that if you want to do any allocation or you want to add any allocation, there has to be amount available in pool. So members have been uploading files only for upward allocation without ensuring that there is sufficient amount available in pool. So whenever you get an error that there is insufficient amount available in the pool, that means that there is no amount available. There are two ways you need to do it in that case. First is either downward reduction from somewhere else or bring in fresh collateral. What we have been advising people is that you uh, keep them as two different uh, process and keep them at two different requests. So if you want to do downward allocation from somebody and then do upward allocation, you first do downward allocation ensure the money comes in the pool and then do an upward allocation so that uh, the system processes very carefully. Other nomenclature and uh, file format issues what we have seen is uh, the date format expected in the file has to be in caps with a uh, year as four digits. So like in the example given here, it is 21st APR2022. We have seen people putting 21 uh, APRs in smalls and only 22. So that gets rejected because of the date validation. So this is the correct date validation. In the clearing member code, the expectation is that your primary member code, that is your uh, the five digit numeric code is expected and not your six digit alpha numeric code. So uh, whenever you are putting the file in the primary code, you should have the numeric code and not your alpha numeric code. And like we said in the earlier slides of the combination, if it is only CM prop, then only the clearing member code will come. Nothing else will come. If it is trading member, then only clearing trading member will come. If it is a CP code, then only clearing and CP code will come. 
If it is client allocation, then uh, it is CM, TM, and client all three systems. So these are the various uh, combination which you should use and uh, practice. So ideally, again, to reiterate, people who are self-clearing members or TM, CM, when they want to do allocation for themselves, they should use only CM prop and not TM prop. So second part of, uh, so this was basically whenever you add any collateral or whenever you want to allocate any collateral to a new entity. Now coming to a collateral transfer. So now there can be two types of collateral transfer which can happen. You want to transfer collateral for same entity, either be the proprietary or the client or a CP or a trading member from one segment to another. Or second type of transfer could be that you want to transfer money which was allocated earlier to one entity to another. So let's say you wanted to allocate it to client X and now you want to allocate to client Y. So this also we are treating only as a collateral transfer. So here, uh, the basic requirement, the process will remain the same. You have to either do it through the screen or through a file upload or through an API. But the process will be that first you have to do a downward allocation, let the money get free, then do an upward allocation. So it's a two-step process. First is you have to do a downward look. So let's assume you want uh, an example that you want to allocate from CM segment to FNO segment. So what you will have to do is that let's assume you want to transfer one lakh rupees from CM to FNO. Now, again, I want to reiterate that it is a value transfer. We are not doing any instrument or any specific type of collateral transfer. So all your cash, FD, BG have been now combined and a combined value is available, which you can allocate and use in various segments for various entities. So if you want to use, remove from one entity or one segment and do it in other things, it is the value which you have to do. It is not the bank guarantee or an FD which will move. The bank guarantee FD cash will remain as common and it will not change its color or its shape. It will remain where it was. Only the value will move from one segment to another. So here, earlier the issue was that if you had a the one crore bank guarantee, if you wanted to move, you have to move full one crore from one segment to another. Now here, what is there? Let's assume you require only 25 lakhs from cash to FNO. So you need to download, uh, do a downward allocation only for 25 lakhs in cash and move 25 lakhs to FNO. So you are, you don't have to do, so whether it has this the cash to FNO has happened from cash, FD or BG is irrelevant. It is the value which has moved. So all your allocation in all segments where you are a clearing member put together will match with all your cash FDBG. So you can basically, everything becomes fungible and you can move from one segment to another. So this is how the transfer will work. So once the download allocation has happened successful, you can do an upward allocation in the other segment. So like in this example, once the downward allocation in CM becomes successful, the amount will show in the pool and from the pool, you can do an upward allocation in FNO. The third important part is the release. So um, earlier what used to happen is that you used to put directly the request on CIM for your cash FD BG. And uh, then we used to check for margin utilization and if margin was sufficient, we used to release from there. Now, uh, since uh, post this, uh, the allocation, we don't know where the money has to be reduced from, from which segment, from which entity. That's why first you have to do is uh, like the addition, there are two step process that you add collateral and allocate process as well. For release also, it is a two step process. First you unallocate collateral and then release collateral. So let's assume you want to release say one lakh rupees. First you have to reduce allocation from any of the entities who have allocated. So that again, you have to use the procedure of screen based, file based or API based and you have to reduce the collateral. Once the collateral is reduced, it will show again in the pool, in the collateral equally in the pool. The moment the amount is available in the pool is when you can put a request on CIM for release. So till the time, if you put a request on CIM and there is no money available in the pool, that request will get failed or rejected or the amount requested will be shown as zero. So in case, uh, in case of a cash release, the amount the request will get processed, but the amount release will show as zero. In case of FDBGR, the amount, it will get rejected if there is no sufficient amount in the pool. So whatever amount of collateral you want to release, that you have to ensure is available in the fungible collateral pool. In case you want to release a segment specific uh, non-fungible bank guarantee, then you have to ensure that either it is available in the pool or in the segment. So let's assume you want to release a bank guarantee in cash market, which is non-fungible. In that case, either of this will be there. It's not that both you have to put. If the amount of non-fungible is available, then from this non-fungible also, you can remove a fungible bank guarantee or non-fungible bank guarantee. 
the withdrawal of cash can happen only from the account where you have debited. Wherever you have put the money, only from that account you can release the amount back. So, so if you have added in cash, though you may have transferred it uh, to FNO during the day, once you bring it back to the pool, you can take release only back from your cash account. The last uh, part is on the renewal. So renewal, uh, there are two types of renewal which can happen before the maturity or after the maturity. So if the renewal happens before the maturity, there will be no issue. The amount will continue as it is. And you don't have to do any allocation because the allocation will continue as it is because your amount has remained same. So in that case, if you have ensured that if there is a maturity which is due today and if you renew it before today, you don't have to do any action. Only action is you have to ensure that the maturity, the renewal happens before the maturity. So we, that's why we are advising people to ensure that the you know, renewal happens prior to maturity. So you don't have to go undergo this process of unallocation and non-allocation non and allocation again every time any instrument matures. Assuming that there is the renewal doesn't happen and the collateral goes into maturity. Since the collateral matures, we need to ensure that that much amount of collateral has to be removed from somewhere. So that's why if the members are not able to renew it, they have to ensure that by EOD, using either the intraday or the EOD functionality, sufficient amount is available in the pool so that that much amount can be reduced for any instrument which is maturing. Assuming that you did not do, assuming that uh, what let's assume a bank guarantee was maturing today and you could not do an allocation, then in that case, you will be forcefully reducing from the proprietary, the CM proprietary of any of the segments of the member. Assuming uh, in one of the segments, we'll go and reduce it. If the money is not available sufficiently in that segment, we'll go and reduce it from multiple segments. So in that case, what will happen is next day your CM proprietary allocation will become zero or will get reduced to that extent. So that's why we are advising people to ensure that, you know, uh, to renew the instruments before maturity. And in case when they, when the renewal is given for those mature instrument, it will not automatically go back to where it was. It will go in the pool and then member have to then reallocate where they want it. So whenever the renewed instrument comes to us, it will again show in the pool and then member will have to renew that uh, using the same um, screen or file functionality. So these are the basic uh, uh, points which we wanted to discuss on the basic part of it. Maybe um, um, we can handle queries on this and there are maybe the subsequent part, uh, like Vikram Sir said, when we do the subsequent one, we can have much more advanced one on how and where to see. So we, we will uh, do things on like, where you can see these informations, uh, what all informations are available in terms of real time or what all information is available in terms of end of day. So we'll try and cover up those into our next presentations. So uh, should we take up uh, Q&A, sir? Uh, can, uh, uh, chat? How, how would you like to take up, would you, you, would you like to take up yourself from the Q&A? Uh, yeah, no, no problem. I can, I can do that. I think Virendra ji, you can select some questions, and yeah. we have been receiving so many questions from the members also before the webinar. Also, I think Virendra ji and Ajay ji can, you know, handle those questions. And but we can uh, ask yeah, it better. You, uh, I agree with Sandeep Virendra ji because if it is moderated out, you can cover variety of questions. Yeah, uh, so that a wider aspect is covered out rather yeah. than reading through and taking one by one. Okay, uh, so uh, <clears throat> some of the questions which we already had and which also came in Q&A is that uh, it might be an initial uh, hiccup. Uh, so sometimes, you know, things are not, I mean, happening as anticipated by members. And there are multiple kind of scenarios in which they have experienced. And some of the reasons, for example, you've clarified, you know, this could have been the possible reason, etc. But uh, one of the most common problems which members are facing is in release of stocks. They are not able to see those stocks, specifically stocks which they have recently pledged, and they are not able to get the release. They have to send mails, etc., follow up, etc. So, so Virendraji, that is something that we have taken on a priority. And as if I if I can speak on your behalf, I think that is not a problem which you will see effective Monday. But till that time, in case you have any problem, please feel free to reach out to us. Don't wait till the last moment uh, because the pain timelines are sacrosanct. 
please reach out to us immediately and we will help out where whatever comes to us no yeah but, we've seen your your team is uh, proactive in trying to help but uh, what i am trying to say is because members are not able to see on the portal they are not able to generate the request on the portal because if that will be now possible effective monday up everything and it has been yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so basically uh, yeah a couple of uh, uh, intermittent uh, records are missing on the portal uh, which we will ensure that over the weekend are updated on the portal and from monday onwards all the portals will be visible and uh, in case uh, there are any urgencies uh, we have been asking so uh, maybe um, the main way since uh, it is not on the portal we also find it a little bit difficult to handle that's why we are asking some information from the members so basically uh, the uh, pledge uh, margin pledge number or the you know pledge sequence number is what is an important one if you provide us that we will be able to immediately act on it and release it so uh, members will uh, take care they'll try to generate the pledge request yeah. so hopefully by monday we will be back to normal and everything will be visible on the cim module and they can do their file uploads and uh, all your request should get accepted for any exceptions uh, you know what we have been seeing is that uh, yeah people have been sending us mail and then we are asking back them the request number so uh, just to clarify in case you are sending any mails if you can send the the final pledge sequence number of pledging to cc so there, there can be multi so in case of client there are three numbers which are generated client to tm and tm to cm and cm to cc so if you send us the cm to cc pledge sequence number we can immediately act on that mail and release it okay so should i take one point uh, yeah yeah please please ajay so first of all like uh, i would like to congratulate ncl and uh, vikram ji and zafar ji like it has been implemented smoothly and uh, uh, though there are some teething issues i i hope it would be resolved soon so one of the common problem like i have received from members like client wise tm wise beam allocation and rrm amount uh, which is blocked from pm and cm is not available on uh, the nmas uh, during the market time and even the eod so sir eod we are giving a cc01 cc02 report which gives you the amount which has been allocated which is the gives you the breakout of the collateral of the client and the margins of the client so anything excess above that uh, so we are not actually computing it but we are giving the information based on which member can compute it so we are giving the client wise breakup of the collateral allocated pledge with cc and the margin for that client at end of day basis today on a real time basis what we are giving is we are giving cumulative sum of the collateral of the margin of the client which is getting blocked from the tm collateral uh, we are not giving the breakup of end uh, client client wise end on a, on a real time in live market but that we have taken as a feedback uh, and we'll see uh, how soon we can start giving it on a live basis also on our invoice portal but yeah currently uh, cumulative across all clients what is the excess amount of the client which is getting blocked from tm prop is visible on the nmas margin summary margin screen but so far like in cc0102 the mm -hmm. beam allocation amount is not visible the the amount which has been allocated by tm or cm it is visible so anything up sir anything beyond that margin will be assumed to be deemed allocation anyway sir what we will do is that before that uh, eod penalty kicks in we are uh, so we are going we are working on a separate report which will give you the short allocation information it will actually show how much is the short allocation so not the deemed allocation because uh, most of the concern is on the short allocation where the penalty will be applicable so that anyway we are separately working on and uh, you know at least uh, sometime before we start the penalty we will start sending the report and that we will we are trying to start that report at least on eod and then uh, move it to intraday basis also so you can you know uh, so screen based definitely we are working on plus Uh, downloading uh, full files like reports like your mg13 we will download those reports where you can see how much is the short allocation both intraday as well as end of day okay okay uh, so one more point like whether ncl has started giving benefit member uh, like member wise permitted quantity of b plus securities on the basis of utilized margin instead of like earlier practice of fifo so sir when the security comes in it is still on fifo once it is so if it is within the limit when you pledge the security if it is within the limit it is accepted if it is outside the limit it is not accepted all so whatever securities are accepted there the benefit is are given on a margin utilization basis and not on the fifo basis 
But when you give the securities, at that point of time, we see whether the limit is available. So if the limit is not available, that security is not considered at all. So your any uh, market-wide limits and TM-wise limits are still on the basis of play or FIFO only because that depends when you give the security, we check the limits. But the subsequent one where the 50-50 utilization is there or the cash, non-cash utilization is there, that is dynamic based on whichever client uses first. So uh, our experience have been here the last five days is that most of the people earlier used to not, uh, you know, whose prop was getting blocked, now are seeing that uh, nothing is getting blocked in their prop and everything is getting utilized from client securities. So, Josefa, a related question to that is the, the pledgeable value has changed, you know. The, the, now, the annexure 1, 2, 3, for example, in annexure 2, you say the member can deposit each security subject to a maximum of 25% of the total margin. Yeah, so I will give a, a background to that. So, uh, earlier it was based on the cash component. And earlier, since the cash component was only at a clearing member level, we could do a 25% check or 5% check on cash component. Now, since uh, the cash component can be at a client level and a member level, we have uh, uh, reverse engineered it and we have said that whatever margins is getting used cannot be more than 25. So one security cannot support more than 25% of the total margins across all clients of a member. Okay. Across all clients of a member. So yeah. but supposing client A has given only uh, a particular security and 100% of his margin. Can yeah, yeah. That will work. That will work. We are looking at a clearing member level concentration here. So mostly for our case, the concern is on clearing member level concentration. So that's why we are checking it across all clients. Okay. So 25% of the margin of the entire member, not of yeah. the agency. No, no, not of the client, of the entire member should not be supported by a single security. And that single security also again is across all clients. Okay, yeah. So this this was an important change because we were not able to appreciate totally from the yeah. wording of the circular. Yeah. So I, I think uh, uh, other thing is that now the uh, on the brighter side, it is that uh, the value of non-cash has increased drastically. Yes, correct. A lot of members have experienced that and they are not able to decipher the reason for this. Yeah. Maybe uh, we, we, we could have more uh, expressly pulled out in our circular, but uh, yeah, sorry for that. No, no, we understand. But I mean, it's good that you are clarifying now and so many members are present and they will be able to understand because this is one of the common uh, questions which members have given, you know, how come the value of a stock has gone up substantially now? Yeah, Ajay ji, please continue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. one more question. Zofar ji, they say if the client has given 10 lakh rupees of non-cash collateral replays and zero cash collateral. So how much deem allocation would be done from TM or CM cash collateral if the client has used, say, 9 lakh rupees of margin? So uh, maybe just repeating 10 lakh rupees of non-cash is given. And yeah. nine lakh. Uh, so in this case, sir, uh, basically they say again there is uh, there are two three things are there. One is the collateral getting used for RRM. One is a short. So that allocation. is why I have, I have taken nine lakh rupees because uh, it's the not moment, even the RRM. So the moment uh, so, uh, let's uh, so it, this all depends on how much cash is available with the TM or the CM. In this okay. example, you tell me how much cash is available with the TM. Sufficient or the CM. cash is available with the TM. No, no, so sufficient means what, sir? Let's assume 10 lakhs non-cash is there. So how much is there? 5 lakhs so or 10 crore, lakhs? 1 crore cash is available with the TM. Ah, so in that case, nothing will get used from the CM's cash. No, no, from TM. Like how much DM allocation would be done from TM cash? Nothing, sir. Okay, and in the similar example, if the TM prop fund is only for uh, 5 lakhs, then what happens? If it is 5 lakhs, then what will happen is that uh, 4 lakhs will get used from the TM cash. Uh, 4.5 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4. 4.5. 4.5. Sorry, 4.5. The member would go into RRM essentially. Yeah, it will touch 90%. So the value so actually it is the, the total to see if you go so i will explain it in an earlier scenario when there was no client level in earlier scenario you would have had five lakh rupees cash five lakh rupees non-cash total effective collateral would be 10 lakh rupees the moment you trade a nine lakh rupees margin you should go into rr so the same is the logic sir so 50 percent of the non-cash uh, uh, would be uh, uh, like uh, used from the tm's cash collateral no, 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 sir. That's why I'm saying it depends on how much cash the member is having. Like in earlier scenario, the member utilization was 0%, sir. Okay. 
So when you said that member had one crore rupees and the client had ten lakhs non cash and he uses nine nine lakh rupees, that time the TNS utilization or CNS utilization will show as zero percent, sir. Because okay, so everything will get blocked. So the from... problem arises when the non cash of the customers in aggregate exceeds the prop cash. Yes. Okay. The when the fifty fifty percent threshold is breached, then all these problems start appearing. Yeah, because the moment fifty fifty see, it is like when the fifty fifty percent exceeds, then we have to use from cash from somewhere. So that's why it will then go from the team prop, and if team prop is not sufficient, team prop. Hmm. 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 Ajay ji, next question. Yeah, yeah. So, so one <clears throat> one problem is there from the CM uh, point of view. So, uh, in uh, margin utilization window, say trading member utilization, it is showing forty eight percent. But when C CM wants to uh, release TM margin, it is it is showing amount request rejected due to high margin utilization. Ah, sir. So here, if you see in this case, is what we have observed is that. most of the margin is get in use from clients non cash so that's why we have if we see the nmas screen if you see we have given one um, uh, excess margin which actually gives you the non cash the part of cash also which is getting used from this so utilization wise it is supporting but the moment you remove that cash that much non cash also becomes invalid and then the utilization goes up high so yeah. that's why that's why this doesn't work But that figure somewhere should be visible even to the TM or to the CM. So that sir, that maybe percentage wise is not there, but amount in absolute amount wise it is there. So whatever columns you have given, uh, okay. maybe we will take it up in our next presentation as to in the which columns you can add it up and see what is your margin, sir. When we check for the downward allocation. Okay. Uh, so a similar question which is there in the Q and A also. the basic problem is when a member has allocated for example in cash market say 10 lakh rupees margin against 10 lakh rupees fund received by the client and the client does a trade in t2t now compliance requirement is just for 2 lakhs but if the client has traded 10 lakhs and now he wants to trade in f and o the member can't reduce it from 10 to 2 and then move it to f and o because yeah, because that amount, amount is blocked towards the margin requirement correct so so this is the typical kind of uh, question on on rejection because normally in terms of mandatory compliance he needs to maintain only 2 2 lakhs as balance instead of 10 lakhs okay sir we will uh, we will check on this sir yeah so one one more point like <clears throat> like as you have uh, Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I think on the previous yes, question, you, anyway, the balance eight lakh rupees has to be funded by the proprietary. A... Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So on the previous question on the TFT, uh, the balance eight lakh has to be anyway has to be funded by the proprietary. Uh, they can anyway use the proprietary in the other segment because anyway when we are going to monitor intraday also, we are going to monitor across total collateral in total money. So that should not be an issue, sir. Because uh, the ten lakh margin that the CCN has to be paid to by somebody. So if client pays two lakh, the balance eight lakh has to be paid by the member. Yeah, correct. I understand it has to be paid eventually. TM prop only has to pay that margin. Yeah. But but the question is, they are not able to allocate it to that particular. Uh, because cash market margin will get dropped. Yeah, yeah. Plus two, whereas this will then pose a challenge on T plus two day. Okay, sir. We will note it down and we'll see what we can do on that. Yes. Hmm. So one one point is <clears throat> related to the collateral interface management uh, window. So if uh, TM or CM is going to release any FD or BG, so currently it used to be segment wise. So now it is a common pool. Like from there, uh, the the BG or FD has to be released, and uh, the once it is released, it it affects any of the segment. so if if you can give uh, one uh, like this bg or fd belongs to which segment on that uh, common pool so sir like i said in the earlier so so sir like i said in the earlier part of the presentation now it is value based allocation 
so uh, we will not be able to give any segment wise because that money can be used in any of the segment uh, but but like once say say somebody gets release fd of say 1 crore rupees so to which segment it is going to affect because the margin valuation of that segment the moment it is released, no 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 sir no sir no sir so i think i will i will i don't know whether my screen is still shared or not when you do release sir you have to first bring down uh, no your screen is not shared but you can share it i think yeah you had mentioned in your let me reshare this uh, and uh, so if you can wait this for this question that... so i'll go back to cim i think my question relates to cim window you have you have shown yeah, yeah. the nmas you have shown the yeah. nmas so From here sir so so yeah yeah no in nmas the moment you see till the time any amount is available in your fungible pool you cannot ask for release sir so yeah, yeah. which segment you want to reduce is now in your hand not where you put the instrument So, assuming that you have some amount free in cash market, you can release some amount from cash. You have some amount in FNO, you can reduce some amount from FNO and get that BG amount or FD amount in your pool. The moment you get BG amount and FD amount in pool, then in CIM, what we have done, sir, I don't have the print screen currently, but in CIM we have added one more segment called common or all segments. Yeah. And all your existing FD, BG, which are non, which are fungible. Have been moved to that segment. So today, if you go to CIM and go to cash market and search for FDR, you will get nothing. Everything has been moved to that common segment. So once you have made this amount free, you can go to the common segment, whichever FDR you want to release, you select by the number, and then uh, we will check that that much amount is free in the pool and we'll release it. Okay, but the moment FD is released, it is uh, the the. percentage utilization is segment wise so it it is hitting any of the segment sir your utilization percentage will not change after release because you have first uh, removed the allocation so okay. your percentage utilization will change after when you have re reduced the allocation but when you now that the allocation is reduced and the collateral that is lying in pool is like dead collateral it is not being used for any segment so it when you withdraw from the pool the utilization will not change Okay, I would look into it, uh, Virender ji. Ah, uh, so one more question is related to release of stock. For example, if client had pledged that stock towards margin, and the, at the end of the day he has sold, and we want to do early uh, pay in, but that margin is against that same uh, security. So for release, you will do a deemed allocation from our prop and block and release that security, or we need to first actually allocate for more capital and only then it will get released. So for securities, we will because uh, most of the securities what we believe are for EPI, we will definitely release them and do a uh, blocking from uh, prop collateral. So that you will do automatically. We don't need. Yeah, to... yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have been doing that earlier also prior to this also that we have, wherever the client release are there, we have been ensuring that client say it shall be released and then that is getting blocked from prop collateral. So we will continue to do that way. Because then you will definitely have an opportunity to take the stock and then allocate from your proprietary fund. So the allocation from proprietary funds will not happen automatically, but it will show a short allocation if you don't do that allocation. So the shares will go away and then margin will be there. So the share release will happen, but then you have to ensure that you then sufficiently allocate the money towards the margin requirement which is there. Okay. So uh, I'll just, I mean, run through the most common problems which members have yeah. faced. I know this was an initial jitter, but we just want you to be aware of uh, them. So uh, for the GSEC, uh, the Kuber portal allocation in some cases was having problem, or they got that allocation later on in the. Yeah, so that I think mostly has happened. So today, most of the PCMs have been able to do the GSEC allocation. Uh, one couple of more teething problems are there that should get uh, fixed by. So today, most of the PCM who are using GSEC as uh, are able to give limits from using GSEC directly. Okay. Uh, initially, auto give up was also impacted for uh, custodial trades. You know, for for the first. So there, uh, so there, I think the, the the clearing members had uh, missed out on providing sufficient collateral to CPs. So earlier, the auto approval used to work on a limit based uh, mechanism that where whatever limit they used to stand. 
till that extent of margins and trades were getting auto approved so on day one uh, most of the cms had not so now the limits concept has gone away and you have to actually allocate the collateral so most of the uh, cps had uh, cps who are on auto approval had not sufficient collateral so that's why the auto approval was not working but i think now most of the cms have allocated sufficient collateral to those cps and auto approval has been working okay and uh, similarly uh, we've discussed some of the reasons the fund release and the fd release uh, a lot of members faced some issue in withdrawal etc some of the issues you have already highlighted yeah so main so main main issue which we have observed is that people are putting release request first and then trying to do unallocation but uh, since the release request are put on immediate they get immediately checked it so the process has to be that first you do an unallocation wait for an allocation amount to get reflected in the pool and then go into cim and put the request to ensure that it gets processed so that has been the common mistakes both for addition as well as release that uh, you know people have been uh, just expecting uh, action on by doing cim it will happen addition release but it is not that it is a two step process which everybody has to follow now uh similarly the other most common issue has been that the summary margin number tallies with the uh, break up and margin used but in the detailed break up you know the two figures are not matched. that is not in line with the actual margin consumed or the collateral of that particular ucc so, so the client wise uh, so like i said the client wise data uh, is having some delay is what we had observed and some issues in one of the segment that we are looking into it and most probably will try and fix it as soon as possible okay uh one more teething trouble came was that for margin files of uh, second and fourth may you know the delivery margins were continued to be blocked the next day whereas they should have been dropped so so the entire margin that, files were that we will check it i am not fully aware about it we will check and uh, work on that i think it should not be an issue but we will check on that okay so so the other most common uh, feedback for you is that if you can give us real time clients who have consumed more than 90% in some real time report not end of day it will actually be quite useful to monitor and move collateral or uh, funds accordingly where you know where we know that this client for example it could be a symbol wise breach because of which now he is not getting that benefit even though he has pledged so if we can get that on a, a live market condition we actually be able to use that information and adjust ourselves so two things to that one is on the quantity breaches we are anyway giving live as and when we uh, upload the files uh, in uh, inverse collateral module which we were giving earlier also client wise isn wise uh, quantity pledge and permitted quantity so that information was earlier available and will continue to be available to know which coins uh, shares which we have given are whether eligible or not uh, mm -hmm. in terms of valuation we yeah, are uh basically we are trying to get uh, all the values allocated plus uh, value of security pledge information into a single screen and provide you so that you can compare with the margins of that client so that's a noted uh, feedback which we have got over the last week and year also but that will require some amount of time because we we had not uh, uh, developed it so we we'll have to uh, develop that so once we are uh, we uh, close out all the issues which are there we will work on that so it may require some amount of time but we will definitely do that yeah uh, so first is like one clarification is required for the quarterly and monthly settlement because now the 50 50 rule has been applied so even the settlement should be on the on the basis of 50 50 i am not aware i think somebody from compliance uh, if renu is there if she can answer it uh renu ji yeah we have renu on the call rishan check kar lijiye unko aapne uh, spotlight diya hua hai na she can unmute herself Yeah, yeah now i can uh, yeah mr uh, panji what uh, question you have so yeah, the ma'am the think... question is that earlier in uh, at the time of quarterly settlement you know we had mm -hmm. to release all the funds of the client yeah. now that we have to maintain 50 50 can we release only 50% uh, as per that margin requirement of the day of settlement see then in that case you know you should have the security also to the extent of 50% only mm -hmm. the remaining security requires to be unpledged 
we should not have excess securities under pledge because if we have excess pledge of securities then as per rule uh, it has to be first adjusted uh, towards margin and then only the remaining uh, margin can be actually adjusted through the funds if you are doing a 50 50 rule then in that case securities should not be in excess of more than 50% rest of the securities should be unpledged so renu ji it would uh, create problem for the client because say the fund is released so now the deem allocation uh, would be uh, done by the uh, by the system uh, related to his uh, margin requirement and uh, then it would have some cost on the client so no, from the cost in terms of because uh, you are actually blocking 50% of the margin in in uh, cash and remaining 50% you are blocking in the securities and the remaining securities if you unpledge nothing happens you are not releasing fund no you can release excess unpledged securities which are under pledge <clears throat> so securities should be to the extent of 50 50% but practically how how much would it be feasible like that we have to see because Actually, madam problem is that because the number of agents can will be large clients are not happy to you know bear that expense because if he has 20 agents which i release he is hmm. pays 400 rupees on the day of settlement again next day he has to go through the process of cycle of pledge etc mm -hmm. so i think uh, mansu yeah, khane ji what i can uh, what we can actually do let us take it up with depositories on maybe the charges etc whatever is there how we can uh, do something about it because ultimately the rule rule says that first it has to be adjusted uh, with the securities and then we have to go to the fund side if we directly do 50 50% then securities are in excess which are uh, under pledge we are we are just uh, uh, requesting to review the rule in the in the because when, when, the, when the rule was made there was no yeah. system of direct pledge True. In fact, settlement of securities has been taken away post the direct pledge. So now, right. with the change in regulatory landscape, we need to update the rules. We understand Fair. that we might need to go back to SEBI, but I yeah. mean, request you to take it up so that you know this is a practical problem which can be resolved. Sure, sure, sure. We can take it up. In fact, we can also say that uh, while we are we propose this as a change at the time of settlement. it can be looked at during margin maintenance also so when we say that during uh, settlement we are looking at 50 50 then during margin maintenance also could be 50 50 which can be mandated to the client so uh, submit some proposal we will also carry this to sabi sure ma'am we, we will uh, yeah we'll carry it ajay ji you can take up any other questions from one, one more question uh, was there in uh, chat like can we uh, do the allocation one day in advance so say uh, tuesday's file can can it be uploaded on uh, monday so one so there is no uh, so there is no uh, day wise allocation is such so we are not uh, removing allocations which were done previous day so uh, uh, whatever allocation is there in the system will continue will get continue next day so if you have uploaded any file at 5:30 or 6 o'clock and it gets successful it will show as in the monday and on the next day morning so there is no subsequently that is a date wise ah with respect to time you may we may agree that it 6 o'clock may be too short but definitely like we said that once we are things are stabilized we will uh, relook at the time okay okay so the typical problem will come for cash market where you know we will have to deallocate intraday because the first morning file typically contains margin of t minus 2 but subsequent files don't contain margin of t minus 2 so changing that every day intraday after the pay in pay out time is completed is actually far far more difficult in fact uh, one of our members has suggested that is it possible that on t plus 2 day morning if we complete all our pain supposing we had to do a pain of 100 isins and we have done pain of 95 for those 5% you block the margin plus take the full pain amount if it is due from me and drop the exposure across so uh, see that again uh, uh, 
for exposure uh, because if you see the current peak margin requirement even if you have uh, uh, done a full pain and netted at a clearing member level at a clearing member level you may get the benefit of margins but at a client level the minimum margin collection continues to remain only when you do client level epi or client level early pain of security the fund that peak margin requirement goes away so but you already have uh, provision if i complete all my securities pain then i no, 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 that is that is only at a clearing member level because the provision is for netted settlement to clearing corporation level So in today's scenario, also let let's assume uh, before this allocation and allocation, when you used to as a member, you used to complete your net settlement with CC. The CC used to not levy any margins to the C. But when we send you the peak margin requirement files, those peak margin of the clients continues to be remaining there because the requirement of you collecting from the client continues to be there. So maybe that uh, other thing we will have to maybe look look at whether T plus two. Uh, The settlement which is completed is required or not on T plus two file is what is, was an earlier uh, suggestion also. So maybe that could be one of the things which we have to uh, relook at it. But uh, as far as margin blocking is there, uh, we, the margin may get released and you may be able to get free collateral as such. But your short allocation when we compare in that the peak margin requirement will be compared. So the peak margin requirement of the client will be there. So that you will have to continue to maintain the allocation till the pain is over. we need to actually in these uh, three months figure out some solution to this because going forward this will increasingly pose a challenge maybe we can think of changing the pain timing to before market open at 9:15 or at 9 am so that then you can technically drop because pain has been completed of course it will require a wider discussion but we need to find some solution to this problem because t plus 2 morning intraday every day changing allocation across so many customers will pose a operational hassle for all members because cash market margin is a very large number okay uh, uh, how much time do we have uzefa because we have exceeded the initial 1 1 hour uh, brief so vendor ji i think uh, what we can do is we can uh, uh, there's a host of questions which have come in i think we can keep the session maybe for the next time where we can answer uh, some of the rest of the questions we'll also beef up our beef up our presentation to address uh, some of these questions which are out there uh, i think uh, uh, i think vikram ji there are so many questions also and people are looking for the recording also so virendra ji uh, will we be sending the recording to everyone yes we will we'll share a link we are recording we'll share the same. recording and i think we should go through one to one questions also because there are more than i think 150 questions and uh, one of our senior member mr jay prakash gupta also has a question so can we just give him a chance to ask the question if you don't mind yes yes please certainly yeah he is our chairman west so jay prakash ji are you there he posted a question i think then yeah hi hi sandeep ji hi good evening yeah, hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah. so there is a question from my risk team so uh, you know i i'll put him across kundeep uh, ajawna sir in cash segment the margin uh, of uh, is carry up to the t plus 2 up to the first file of t plus 2 peak margin so in that case the system will not allow me to downgrade the allocation of that client up to the t plus uh, second file of the peak so it will be the 12 to 1230 time trade on when, monday at so wednesday so it, it is the same question which we discussed in a different way uh, yes sir of the, the timing so that This is what I was trying to highlight. I mean, it's a common problem which members have raised, and uh, you know we need to find some solution in these three months so that from the next phase we are able to resolve this problem. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. So, so Virendra ji, this was discussed. I think we'll go through the recording. So, I think that gives a clarity. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Virendra ji. Thank you, Ajay ji, for uh, handling the Q and A so well. <laughs> and I think. Uh, 
and thank you to the team also renu ma'am vikram ji and the whole team for the presentation also so now i think uh, uh, we will request dr satish kumar arya a very senior member and he is the chairman south of cpi to deliver a vote of thanks a formal vote of thanks to everyone and i must congratulate uh, the team also and the webinar has crossed 500 plus participants and i think the next series is also there in the lineup so next time i think uh, more participants we can see and we can see the seriousness of the issue also so thank you vikram ji from my side satish ji over to you thank you very much sandeep ji first of all heartiest congratulation to you all because very large number from across the country 500 plus is a very large number in the any of the webinar so i really thanks on behalf of the cpi mr vikram ji othari md and ceo nsr and mr ujay pai and his team madam renu from the nsc mr sidhu and cpi team virender mansukani ji sandeep ji ajay ji and all the 500 plus participants from the bottom i heart i, heart, I thank you all thank you a lot sir thank you very much over to sandeep ji yeah thank you so much once again and i think uh, next friday we are again going to meet and i think with more questions and more clarifications and thank yes. you virendra ji thank you i will once, once again request members to send in their questions in advance it helps us collate and ensure the most common questions are addressed in the webinar i know a lot of these questions have been unanswered today people who had sent in their queries earlier and we saw them most common queries out there that we try to cover in this webinar there will always be shortage of time we request you by next thursday day and you send us all the questions so that on the morning we can compile and share with the ncl team and most of the questions addressed thank you everyone um when we share the mail id uh, where we can ask for the questions uh, yeah, we will share we'll drop a email ha huh? vikram ji sorry please yeah. my request would be we can receive the questions by friday morning that will be really helpful so that yes. we are also okay. prepared actually then that will be well prepared yeah thursday that's why we requested members to send by thursday evening yeah. we'll consolidate it and give you on friday morning yes thank you thank you very thank much you. once again for having us over thank you very much thank you so much thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you